Sage Wanderer here, and welcome to the Sheep Pen. Bah! Where no goats are allowed. <laughs> We're going to talk about goats today, in fact. Uh, you could say this is a, another sermon on goats. Because um, we got to stop the takeover. We absolutely have to stop this takeover. Well, Sage, what are you talking about? What takeover? This demonic takeover of our world more specifically, our culture in America. Now, I'm going to straight up tell you that I believe that the most efficient and proper way to raise a child is to have two parents in the, in the house, okay? I'm not even going to say what gender the parents ought to be or that the parents even have to be their blood parents. They can be adopted parents. They can be grandparents raising a child. But one person raising children creates a 2D human. I'm sorry, to some degree, they lose depth when they don't have the other personality. Now, it doesn't have anything to do with gender, in my opinion. It has to do with uh, balance. There ha uh, people tend people raised by a single individual without input. Now, just because you're a single parent doesn't mean you can't have this other input. This other input can come from uh, help from a from a family member. So let's say you're a single mom. You got a brother. He's helping you out with the kids. Or you got a sing you're a single mom and you got an active husband, uh, ex-husband rather, or even a stepfather that's involved. It doesn't matter. It t just I'm, what I'm trying to say is. It's more than a one-person job. And there's a lot of reasons why. Just talk to a single mom. She'll tell you it's more than a one-person job. A single mom will tell you it's everything she can do to go to work, to take care of the kids. I was a single dad, right? I was a single dad. I had full custody of my children, and I raised them without a woman in the house for many years, okay? So I can tell you it's not a one-person job. I got 180 IQ. I'm a very talented individual. I'm a high energy person that will probably live to be over 100. But it was all I could do to raise my kids alone. So this is in no way meant to throw any parent, parent under the bus, right? I know how hard it is and you do too. That's why you should agree with me that raising children is a two-person job. You just can't do it solo, right? They tell you you shouldn't go on a hike by yourself. Have a hiking buddy. Don't hike solo, right? But you can raise kids solo. No, you need... I ain't saying it takes a village. I'm saying what nature says, what history has taught us. That it's a two-person job. It don't matter if you're a penguin and the male raises the babies and sits on the, you know, sits on the eggs, uh, uh, you know, and the mother goes out and hunts. It doesn't matter, right? You, uh, the rest of that is is honestly it's just um doesn't matter to the overall argument that for one person to do this job it's maddening right can i get an amen from all the single parents now having said that one of the main reasons is you get this two dimensional polarized one opinion in your life there's one person as the child from the child's perspective okay you have one parent who is the source of all truth. Um, your sense of reality is going to be very much monochromatic. It's going to be one point of view, one perspective. It's going to be myopic, is another word there. Uh, tunnel vision, very narrow. Your experience is only going to be limited to that person. I've found that people that are raised by a single parent and they don't have another strong influence to argue, honestly, to argue with the single parent. If the single parent is always right, you end up with a kid who's always right. Well, I don't care what you say. I'm right. Well, I don't believe like that. Well, you know what? That's just how you think. And you get this attitude that's prevalent now in the world, that there is no way to think but my way of thinking. There, they lack the ability to work things out. We have a whole generation, multiple generations now of people who were raised in this myopic, monochromatic, one-parent system where there's a dictator and there is no discussion. There is no discourse between the two polar opposite 
uh, uh, opinions that opposites attract. So when p uh, children are raised by couples, whatever combination you want, right? When they're raised by more than one person, even if it's a grandparent and a and a child, right? Raising a grandchild, right? If it's a mom or a dad, you know, that's got a that's got a grown child who's a single parent to a child, and they're working together. I was the other partner for my sister raising her children. That she was a single mom, and uh, she had a husband, an ex-husband that was involved, right? But he lived uh, up here in Oklahoma. She lived down in Texas, and uh, he was kind of the fun parent. So I had to be the disciplinarian. I had to be the bad guy. I'm the guy that when she was a teenager, I went driving around looking for her car in all of these apartment complexes all over Mineral Wells, trying to find out Mineral Wells, Texas, trying to find out what what party she ended up. And when her mom went, you know, couldn't find her on a Sunday afternoon after she'd been gone all weekend. So she's a grown, mature woman now. Everybody does their teenage things. But my point being, I had to be this the bad guy. I had to be the balance, the counterbalance to my sister's permissiveness, right? To my sister, my sister would, would get also angry and harsh. And then I had to be the voice of reason and calm her down. So when a child is raised, seeing the push and pull between two people with opposite personalities, because remember, opposites attract. You, most people don't date people who are just like them. Most people don't hang around with people that are just like them. You want that opposition, that push and pull. Just a little bit. You don't want your enemy in the house with you, right? But you also don't want a yes man who has, doesn't have an opinion. So most couples, regardless of gender, most couples, regardless of even relationship, it can be, uh, a, like I said, a familial family relationship that's working together to raise a child, like me and my sister, for instance. But we hardly ever really agreed on a lot of things. And her child got to see that interaction, got to see that ebb and pull. I'm telling you, I'm under the anointing right now. I didn't come on here to, to, to teach about child rearing, but here we are. I came on here to talk about the problem at hand in this world we live in. But before we can get there, we got to know how, before we can handle the problem, we kind of got to know what the problem is and how we got here. We know that there's a whole generation of kids that are just unreasonable. Right? They're running Twitter until re recently. They're running Facebook. Okay? They're running our country, and they're about to be running our world in a literal way, right? We kind of just, uh, you know, we, we got them running for president. They're in the House and Congress, and the Senate, rather, and the, and the House of Representatives. They're in our local governments, and it's changing the way that the world works to a really unreasonable situation. Let me tell you, I just got took off on Facebook. I got took off of Facebook for simply stating that uh, commenting on a video that showed an altercation between two men armed with knives, and I simply said I would have used a different weapon and used lethal force, but I did it in a three-word sentence, uh, or four-word sentence. I, I would have blanked him. Right? And so, um, now I'm off of Facebook. If you're going, Sage, your Facebook page is fine. You didn't put any... I have a separate Facebook that's just for my very closest friends that's not linked to any of my other social media. In fact, it's intentionally not linked so that I can have some friends apart from my public um, uh, my public face, right? The, 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 the Sage Wanderer um, brand, I guess is the word. I kind of got to have a place where I can just be me, right? And so I was just there being me. And, you know, that's kind of me. I'm like, I'm a little radical. But I just realized there's no safe space in the public realm now to be a grumpy old man. But you know what? Grumpy old men, the way I grew up with grumpy old men, these survivors of World War II and the Great Depression, these guys didn't take no crap off of nobody. And they would speak their mind. You, They would not be allowed to exist in this world. But if we were to resurrect them and bring them into this world today, they would be immediately chastised from every direction. They, I mean, these people that I look up to and, and we should look up to in history sees as great, we call them the greatest generation, would be shunned in this environment. Because of these children who were raised in this monochromatic, single-opinion world don't understand that we can agree to disagree.
They never saw two parents. Agree to disagree. Not only that, the ones that did have two parents, most of their relationships end in divorce. So raise your hand out there if you're a child of a divorced family. So if you did see contention, you didn't see parents working it out and agreeing to disagree and finding common ground and, and negotiating. Our whole country, our national system is built on this negotiation, this agreeing to disagree, this I may not agree with what you say, but I'll fight and die for your right to say it. This concept comes from relationships between two people who stay together for a long time, right? That that's how you stay in a relationship long term is you agree to disagree, right? You don't sweat the small stuff. You learn to pick your battles, right? You accept people, flaws and all. You help them to get better if you can, but you don't pressure them to do it. This ebb and flow, give and take, is something these children didn't see in their homes. Either because they're in a single parent home or because they were in a dysfunctional home. But functional interaction between civilized human beings is the basis for the American political system. American culture is based on the fact that you have the right to speak. I don't have the right to tell you what to think. You can think however you want. There is necess not necessarily a right and wrong, but rather everything has some sort of, um, that's what I'm looking for. It's got to be in context, right? They don't. There's a lot of, of this younger generation who's now in control of major things that don't understand the concept of context. I'll give you an example. I just came out of another Facebook jail situation where a friend of mine posted up a magician doing some really tricky magic tricks that I'm just like, wow. And so as a joke in the, in the vein of Monty Python, <laughs> right, I just put a small comment at the bottom of, of her post. And quite honestly, nobody comments on her post but me. Like, we have a small friends group. It's a small town. It's not like this is being broadcast out to the world, right? That you got to go to my friend's little Facebook page with 60 friends, right? No one's going to see this but me, right? And maybe five or six people if they're looking, if they catch it just right. So these people are literally in your living room telling you what you can and cannot say. They're literally in your bedroom telling you what you can and cannot say because that's how intimate some of this Facebook stuff is that they're policing. We're not sending this out to the world. Only my friends can see this. My friends who agree with me, by the way. But nonetheless, this last one was so silly and out of context, it has to prove the contextual point here, that <clears throat> I saw this magic trick and I replied with, burn the practitioner of certain ancient pagan rituals. The starts with a W, ends with an itch. I, don't, I can't I really even say the words for fear that YouTube's going to be as touchy as Facebook. Right? I'm not trying to get my channel off here. I'm just trying to make a point that this not allowing people to speak, this policing them out of context is a direct result of how these people were raised. So I'm really telling you this because I don't have a solution to fix it. I would like to come up with a spiritual one, and that is just to pray. That is to bind the demonic spirits that are using this uh, disconnect between the way these minds work and the way our country was built. That we can pray against these demons that are that are actually uh, manifesting to to. Uh, manipulate the situation, the, to manipulate this discordance between uh, what these pe how these people think and our, and our system of government, right? I mean, when you have a single mindset, I mean, we, just, we just have to pray against the demons that are utilizing this tool to tear our country apart because this really isn't that big a deal if we could talk about it. But you can't even talk about it. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if I don't get in trouble with YouTube for this video. I'm trying to be a good Christian minister and stay out of politics, right? But this is not, this is about family. This is about the way people think. And God's given me this to share with you because it's what's behind the tension in our country. That when you have this monochromatic way of thinking, the only kind of, uh, uh, the only kind of government that makes sense to a mind like that is dictatorship. Total fascist 
dictatorship is the only thing that makes sense to them because they never heard the two parents discussing. They never heard the two parents working it out. They never heard the two parents negotiating. So they don't know how the Republicans and the Democrats are supposed to work together and negotiate, right? All these kids that are adults now saw was war between their parents. So they brought this war and this war mentality and this, this single-minded, this unfair, this unfair way of seeing things. Because let's face it, if you're raised in a one-parent situation, it's, it's kind of unfair. It's I'm the parent, I pay the bills, do what I say. As a person who dealt with family issues as a youth pastor, and I had to basically act as a go-between between parents and teenagers, <clears throat> that was one of the primary issues that I dealt with, was to tell people that, yes, you have this authority as a parent, but you better not wield it unless you want your kid to run away from home, right? That you can't just say, my way or the highway, because I said so. A kid's got to understand what and why they can't do that. Just because I said so isn't enough. In a two-parent family, <clears throat> if, unless the parents are both really behind it and, and in an agreement, and then it does end up being my way or the highway, when both of them, but most of the time you got one that's, that's, and the other one's a little more apologetic. It's a good cop, bad cop kind of thing. So let's say there's an issue in the family and the one parent says, hey, you're going to do it this way because I'm your dad and I said so. They'll sneak around to mom and go, but mom... Mom, right? Or, or, or doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the gender. It doesn't matter if it's two moms or two dads, honestly. It's the dynamic, okay? We're just talking about the dynamic here, not morality in your opinion. We're just talking about the reality of two people versus one. So when you have a second person to go to, when you've been shut down like that as a teenager, you can go to the second person and go, hey, but really? And they'll go, I know, honey. It's just the way they are or it's just the situation. Um, be patient. It'll change. Maybe next time. There's some conciliatory speech, right? There's some consolation. There's some consoling going on there. I'm trying to tell you that kids raised without that will only embrace dictatorship. No, I'm the senator, so you'll do what I say. Recently, I saw a judge. I don't know whether this judge was raised by two parents or not. I'm just telling you that she got in big buku trouble because she's a family court judge, and she decided to take her bailiff and go to the house of a man who's in a divorce and without a warrant, just on her, I'm the judge, so you'll do what I say, and I'm the preeminent ruler in this world and she took these county sheriff's deputies and marched into this man's house with him going okay I'm objecting okay I'm telling you you can't do this you're violating my fourth amendment right by coming in the house you know you can't do this you're you know this is a this is a civil matter you can't do a search warrant in my house for property but she went in there while the wife and him sat down and divvied up the DVDs right you know, and it's, you got the right guy to deal like that who believes in the Fourth Amendment, and you'd have a shootout in the front porch, right? So <laughs> there's a reason they don't behave this way. And so anyway, um, yeah, she got in big time trouble. I believe she was uh, stripped of her um, of her position and uh, robbed of her uh, immunity and subject to civil uh, lawsuit. Yeah, she got in big time trouble for violating that guy's Fourth Amendment rights, but. Her attitude was, he said, you're not coming in my house without a warrant. She goes, oh, yeah, I am. I'm going to do whatever I want. I'm the judge. And so that, that single person who can do whatever they want, that are above the law because of their authority, that authoritarianism, that dictatorship, that, that, that fascist dictatorship mentality is alive and well in many generations because of the single parent system that we have been using and utilizing for the first time in American history. Wrap your brain around that. Our country can't stand. The takeover is happening because the demonic is using this rift and using this thing that they very carefully engineered. Let, don't, don't get me wrong. They, the, the, the demonic engineered this. They have a thousand year plan. They're working against us. And, and you know, uh, Christians spend all their times praying about little crap instead of praying about the big deal. Like praying that our country might survive this somehow. That these people might learn to compromise. That people, these people might learn to take things in context. That these people might learn that there's two sides to every story. And that 
uh, that you have to use wisdom and you have to balance things and you have to be prudent and you have to want to get along and find a solution. None of this is present in the home of a family who's raised by a single person. Democracy as we know it is if Republican, you want to call it democracy or our constitutional republic is based on two, there used to be more sides, but two sides who argue their points, come to a compromise, work things out to create a better future. This is based on family, where a husband and a wife work together, compromise to come up with a better future for all of them. There's no compromise in this generation. There is there is no such thing as context. If you said it, it's you know like the like the the uh, W I T C H story. It's kind of what kind of world am I living in where I got to spell things? But you know, I just said burn the you know what as a joke. I even contested the deal and went. It was a joke. You misunderstood me. No, you can't say that. That you were calling for violence. You were calling for violence. <laughs> Where's the context? Really? You think someone's going to hear that and go, oh, let's get them. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm just absolutely flabbergasted by the censorship. I'm flabbergasted by the polarization in our nation. And it's because there's this attitude of my way or the highway. No, I don't. There's, there's, we're about three generations deep in people who don't know how to compromise. They don't know how to work things out. They don't know how to live and let live. They don't know how to agree to disagree because they never saw it. They went from an authoritative home ran by one person into an authoritative classroom ran by one person into an authoritative job ran by one person. So they have no concept of democracy. <laughs> We're not, these people that are claiming this is a democracy and are trying to defend our democracy are trying to institute a fascist dictatorship in our country. The thing is, what they don't see coming is that which one of them is going to be the dictator? Who gets to be the mommy in this whole thing? Who gets to be the teacher? Who gets to be the boss in all this? If there could be only one, who gets to be it? I guess this is kind of a political video, but it's really not because... I see this as a demonic strategy to take our country down. I also don't see it as fixable. So as prayer warriors, as spiritual warriors, as people who are trying to protect our way of life so that we can continue continue to feed our children and clothe our, our, our families and keep the lights on and the food on the table, those of us who are concerned about survival, you know, we need, to, we need to pray that some solution to this will manifest. Because right now, you're looking at uh, combat. That Because these people don't know how to compromise, they don't know how to make peace. There was no peacemaking in most people's homes who are products of divorce. Their, their way of making peace was to get the heck away from each other, to separate. So, back in the day when divorce was so demonized, when there was no divorce option, it, till death do us part meant it, people really went, they dug deeper to find a way to work it out. They, they put up with more. They were slower to anger. They were less wrathful. And now with divorce being so easy, people just split. They're just like, you don't like it? Okay, we can fight or you can get out. And that's the attitude in our politics today. We can fight or you can get out. So America's going to fragment because the plan was laid by the demonic decades ago to create a generation incapable of compromise. And what we're really seeing a lot with the split between the right and left is that a lot of people on the right, they had traditional families. A lot of people on the left did not. Nobody's talking about that either. YouTube, please let me talk. Please just let me help. I'm an old wise sage trying to help people in a bad situation here. I am not trying to stir up anything. I'm trying to be a peacemaker. But the people on the left have not seen this compromise. The people on the right, many of them lived with it. So to us, we seem reasonable and they seem unreasonable. 
But to a person who had this mono-authoritarian lifestyle, one parent, one teacher, one boss, there can be only one, when they get in charge, they're, they're, they don't see any checks and balances. They see it as total control, total power and authority, and now they're the boss, and they don't have to listen to anybody, not even our own laws and constitutions in some cases. So I don't know that that's fixable. We can hope that people who know how to compromise rise to the top. We can definitely vote against people who do not show the ability to compromise and work with the other side and come to some kind of joint conclusion that we can all live with. That this is literally what politics and democracy and diplomacy <laughs> is all about. Used to be, it was about getting along not going to war with each other. And I, God's really revealed to me it happened in the family. I think many of you need to drop your focus away from the things that you see. Okay, here's how I'll put it. I had a boss, a bishop, a man of God, right? One of my main mentors, probably the most powerful mentor in my life. After my after the old Marine, okay? <clears throat> and when people would get upset about the sin going on in their town, oh, can you believe it? They were just out there in public doing this and that in public. Can you believe what was on this TV show or this movie? Or, oh, can you believe they were acting that way? We got to do something about all this immorality. My boss just shake his head and he goes, I don't, I don't understand why people get oh, up, so upset when heathens... Act like heathens. When pagans act like pagans, <laughs> they're, they're pagans. What do you expect? How do you expect them to act? <laughs> Y'all need to have that kind of attitude about some of this stuff that you get in a bee in your bonnet about, right? This um, social activism from the right is misplaced. We need to start praying that these uncompromising people see the light. That these uncompromising people, even on our side, there's uncompromising people on our side too. They've always been there. Just because you see the compromise in your family growing up doesn't mean you're going to live that way. You can still become an authoritative jerk, right? So we got them on both sides, right? There's bad guys on both sides. But we as Christians, we've got to find some strategic prayer method. we got to find some method. Help me. Think it through right? Maybe this is me inspiring you for your mission in life. But I'm here to tell you, if we don't find a way to compromise, we're going to have to find a way to survive a civil war in this country. That this authoritative dictatorship that we're seeing on Facebook, we're seeing it in the social media, where it's now bleeding into government. You know, our, well, there is no First Amendment anymore. Let's just get that straight. We got it. We're going to have to stand up and defend our right to speak. I'm sorry that my words might offend, but I still have the right to say them. It used to be something that was well understood in our country, and now that sound that itself sounds offensive to people. When I say that I have the right to speak, even if it hurts your feelings, ah, no, you don't. Ah! Yeah, I do, because the alternative is unthinkable. Because my next deal is, okay, you're going to shut me up? You and what army? Oh, you're going to come to my house and shut me up? I don't think so. So if we don't compromise, the, the, it, this ends in bloodshed. That I mean, compromise is how you keep from having chaos and war. Letting people speak. And not being authoritative and feeling like you have to be in control of everything is the only way this country is going to survive. It, otherwise, you got Nazi Germany. Otherwise, you got, uh, you got Stalin. You got uh, communist China. Where, you know, you got North Korea. Where if they say the, the, uh, the commander and, and leader is a god and doesn't poop or pee because he doesn't have to poop or pee because that would be too human because he's a god. That's how that's what that's what they're forced to uh, uh, say about the North Korean leader. 
He doesn't even pee or poop. He's so above us all. He's a god. You, you know that, right? That, that you have to say that in North Korea. Like, that's what... It's not, it's not a meme. It's the truth. That that's where this is headed. That you're not allowed to think or speak. or It's a dog and a master mentality. That we're not just being subjugated here. We're being subjugated like dogs. We have a leash and a collar on Facebook and on social media. And soon it will be literally in the street. You can't, your phone will be tapped. You get a phone call one day and they'll say, hey, we were listening to your conversation. You can't say that. You know that, right? Or you don't even get the phone call. It's just knock, knock, knock on your door. The police are there. This is this happens all the time in communist China. It started happening in uh, in England, in Great Britain. Then knock, knock, knock on your door. <laughs> I heard you said something. You know, you can't say that. I'm, turn around, put your hands behind your back. That's coming to America. Brought to you by these children who were raised in families where there was no compromise and there was no cooperation because it was just a mono-authoritarian. Mama makes the rules. Teacher makes the rules. Boss makes the rules. President makes the rules. You don't have any say in it. And your only hope is to get to be the boss, to get to be the mama, to get to be the, the teacher, to get to be the boss, to get to be the president. The whole idea of a conglomeration of citizens equally armed with rights, equal in every way in the eyes of the law, working out and compromising the direction of our country is something that cannot work in the minds of people who've never seen it work and don't understand it. All we can do is pray that they can see the light. All we can do is pray because you know what? Despite that being that family model being there, we also did not have any kind of government to look to in the past. When the United States was founded by our founding fathers, there was no working democracy or republic. It was all mono, you know, authoritarian, you know, there was the king and that was it. It's good to be the king. There was the king and that was it. If you weren't the king, you were crap, <laughs> right? And only the king had rights. And he was, he was. Uh, thankfully, the church came along at some point <laughs> in, the, in human history to balance the king a little bit. At least you had the pope and the king, right? But this idea of people running their own lives and being responsible for their own lives is a modern uh, anomaly known as the American experience. This American experiment is about to come to an end if we don't figure out how to compromise. If we don't learn that my way or the highway just means a lot of highway. That do it my way or else usually ends up or else. And they can't keep going the direction they're going. We're headed for a heartbreak. We're headed for a national breakup. And it does come back not to the, I don't, I'm not saying women can't raise kids. I'm saying raising kids is a two-person job. If for no other reason than to have these two opinions that have to work together and the, and the example that gives to a person to make them think that compromise is possible so that they can live with a compromise. They can live with you, you know, live and let live. I can live with you being your own person. And I got to say that to the people on the right too. Quit worrying about pagans being pagans. Quit worrying about uh, gay people being gay. Just let them be gay. Let them be who they are. Stop trying to change who, you know, you can live and let live. You don't have to be right all the time. It isn't my way or the highway. People can work out their own salvation with fear and trembling and you're not God. But that works in both directions. We have to learn to get along and to compromise. So this week, I'm challenging you to pray that the spirit of compromise, the spirit of live and let live, the spirit of acceptance, love, and forgiveness start to permeate our culture, our life, and especially our politics. It starts at home, practicing this with your family and your friend group. Let people be who they are. Don't feel like you have to be right all the time. Agree to disagree. Learn to live and let live. I want you to pray for our country and pray for our society, and pray that we can avoid what I'm afraid is at this point almost unavoidable. We need uh, unavoidable. We need divine intervention. We need angelic intervention. 
We need the Holy Spirit to give these people enlightenment so they can see the necessity of letting other people have their opinions. And just because it hurts your feelings doesn't mean you have the right to tell me what to do. And um, that's something that you don't learn in this modern world. Isn't it funny how you can miss one little thing and change the whole society? We didn't see this one little thing that without that compromise, without that ability to live and let live, that people would lose their way and we'd find ourselves in fascism. Pray for our country. Pray for our families. And I'm going to leave you with this prayer. May the Lord bless and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he bless you in everything you do. May he surround you in his ring of fire and hedge of thorns of protection. May he send mighty angels to uh, surround you, defend you, and drive the enemy from your midst. And then may he cover you in his peace, the peace of God, the peace that surpasses all understanding, the peace of Jesus Christ, the peace of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. See you next time on The Sheep Pen.